Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Eves. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'll demonstrate firstly Easy Connect or Passive ID and then Trust Sector ACI group based policy plane integration. The diagram shows the Trust Sector domain on the left with the 3560 access switch, ICE connected to Active Directory where identity is learned in this use case, and an ASA in the data path towards the ACI data center. On the right is the ACI domain with the APIC DC controller and the Nexus 9K switches in the data center fabric. So first, we can go to Identity Services Engine and see the ACI settings. The policy element exchange is currently disabled between ICE and APIC DC. If we scroll down, we can see the suffix configured to be added to the group-based policies to distinguish where they were learnt from. Security groups added in ICE can be seen under the Trust Set Components menu. In the ICE Live Sessions, we can see that currently there are no sessions active. Similar information can be retrieved from the ICE Passive ID menu. The Passive ID dashboard shows that the Passive ID source, AD in this case, is green and active. And there are no live Passive ID sessions. We'll switch over to APIC DC now and show the initial state over there. So firstly we'll log on and after logging on, we're going to select the tenant that we're connecting to from the TrustSec domain. And the tenant we've configured is called Demo. So from the left-hand menu then, we're going to navigate down to Application Profiles and Application EPGs under, the, under this profile. And you can see we have two endpoint groups added, Client EPG and Web EPG. Now we're going to navigate to the application profile to see the contract set up within this profile. There's an existing contract for inbound traffic from outside the fabric to Web EPG. And we can hover over the contract icon and see the details. In this case we're permitting traffic from outside the fabric to Web EPG. Next we'll navigate down through networking to the L3 OSPF network and see that this interface is a default route out of the fabric that you see there, the subnet on the right hand side. So switching over to CLI, the 3560 access switch, and we can see there are no auth sessions initially. But what we can do now is go back to ICE and have a look at the authorization rules that are configured there. And here the unknown Easy Connect rule is added from MAB before the user has logged in and therefore before the username has been learned from AD. The Easy Connect unknown profile allows access to AD for the user to log in. And the rule above that is added for the user logging in, the condition being if a user has been learned via Passive ID and that user is a member of the employee's AD group, then permit access and assign the employee's SGT. This provides full access to the network resources. On the switch then, we'll enable the in we're going to enable the interface connected to the PC that's going to be used by the employee. And now since that's been activated, we can show the auth sessions on the switch. And you'll see there are two, one for an employee device and one for a contract device that I have connected. The MAC ending 2E9D will be used by the, by the employee. So in ICE then, we can see the authentication messages in the live logs. You can see the MAC address learn and scrolling across you can see the unknown Easy Connect rule being matched and the Easy Connect unknown profile being assigned which allows a user to access AD to log in. And under the ICE passive ID menu, if we have a look at that. We can see the sessions being tracked for 
passive ID operation. Scrolling across we can see our session which has been authenticated using MAB and scrolling further we can see the authorization rule that was matched. So now let's go to our client and log in with the username of employee1. So now that user's logged in, over on in the ICE live logs we can see what has happened. So for our Mac, let's, let's bring it up the table. For our Mac address, we see the Easy Connect employee authorization rule has been matched. So we see the Easy Connect employee has been matched this time rather than the unknown Easy Connect rule. And now we're going to look at the authorization profile. Just sort these columns out. I'll just sort it back in date time order again. So now the the profile assigned this time is permit access with the assigned employees SGT which provides full access. And now under the passive ID menu in live sessions we also see our session with the user identity displayed being employee 1. Also we see the employees SGT assigned. We see the auth method is MAB plus passive ID and we see the authorization policy and profile assigned. Additionally we see that the username has been learned via WMI from Active Directory. So accessing the client we can open a browser and browse to the server in the ACI data center. So you can see that this is working just fine for your browser. What we can do is open a command prompt as well on the client and we can ping the ACI web server if I can spell ping properly so ping that and we can see that that's successful. So going back to the diagram we can see the path that communication takes from the employee through the access switch and ASA within the trust sec domain and onto the web server in the ACI domain via the L3 out interface. And looking at the APIC DC contract we can see why that communication works. It's because we have a permit contract in place between the L3 out interface and that web EPG. So next we will enable the TrustSec to ACI, ACI policy element exchange in the ACI settings in ICE. So we're going to enable this by ticking this box. We're going to save it. So this is now sharing group and membership information between ICE and ACI. And in APIC DC, if we jump over to APIC, we'll jump down to the networks and we can see the user groups that have been learnt from ICE since enabling this exchange. Epic DC has learnt the contractors, developers and employee security groups from ICE and has suffixed them with underscore SGT as requested in the ICE ACI settings. This tells administrators that these new EPGs have been learnt from ICE. Not all ICE SGTs are sent over to the ACI domain, only the tags that have been specified to be sent. You can see the contractors group has been selected to be propagated to ACI and the same for the employees group. If we select the BYOD group, you see that it has not been selected and therefore will not be available within ACI. And the same for the auditors group. As well as ICE sending selected groups to ACI, ICE has learned of EPGs from ACI. You can see the two groups for client EPG and web EPG, suffixed with underscore EPG, are set in the settings. If we refresh the networks learnt within APIC DC, we will see that not only has the employees group been learnt from ICE, but also the membership details of that group. 
i.e. the IP address of our employee within that group. If we go back to our client, we see the IP address of 1052.11 is assigned, and this matches what has been learnt by APIC-DC. So when we try the communications again from client to web server, it no longer works. This is because we only have a contract in ACI from the L3 inbound interface to the web EPG, not from the new employees group learned from ICE. And this is the ACI whitelist model in operation. So let's add a new contract then in ACI for this new employees group. So we're going to drag down a new L3 interface icon and from the drop down select the employees SGT group that is learnt from ICE. Now we're going to drag down a contract icon and touch it to the web EPG and the employees SGT icons to form an association. And we're just going to give it any name that makes sense and we now have a new contract in place between the employees SGT group and the web EPG. The default is to permit traffic in this case. And from the client we can now try to contact the web server again and you can now see that this is successful. So that was showing adding a policy within ACI to control traffic flow from client to server but we can do the same within the TrustSec domain. So in ICE we can show the SXP deta details where you can see the IP address and security group of the web server and employee has been learned. So these are the SGTs and these are the IP addresses which have been learned. These IP to SGT mappings are then sent to SXP connection listeners where enforcement can take place. In this case you can see we have a connection to the ASA which is in the data path between client and server. So let's open ASDM to see what this all means within the ASA. So firstly, under Configuration, and Firewall, and Identity by TrustSec, you can see the SXP configuration at the top and the AAA server assigned. Moving over to the Monitoring menu, we can see the pack that is used to secure communications to ICE. Scroll down, so there's the pack. We can see the environment data that has been downloaded from ICE and the state of the SXP connection. It is on or otherwise operational. Additionally, we can see the IP to SGT mappings that have been sent by ICE via SXP. As the group information is present, then access rules can be built using these groups. And as the membership information is present, then we should be able to enforce traffic between our endpoints. So we can build a rule um, in ASA using these access rules. Traffic from the client is entering the ASA outside interface, so that's where we'll add the new rule. We'll set the rule to deny traffic, so let's add a new one, so we're going to set deny. We're going to set the source security group to be the employees group, so we'll scroll down find the employees group and add that as the source. And the destination security group, we'll choose the web EPG, which is what was learned from ACI and we'll save that. And this is a top-down rule list, so just moving our rule up in the priority list and we're going to apply the change. Now when the employee tries to contact the web server again we'll see that this traffic is being denied again. So we'll do a ping and it's being denied. 
And if we go back to ASDM, we can see the hit counters here on our new rule, as it is this new rule that is denying denying this traffic. If we go back to the client and try communications again, send some more traffic. See, we can't get through. Can't ping. If we go back to the ASA, we'll see the um, hit counters have incremented. So this ends the demonstration. Uh, thanks very much for watching.